One of my favorite places on Earth is at over 12,000 feet in altitude on the high plateau of Bolivia. It's my favorite place because it is entirely unique on planet Earth. No one knows where it came from, and attempts to make it fit into the accepted archaeological history are just too obviously laughable. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Code Blue, dedicated to all things unidentified and brought to you by bluebook.tv. I am Thor and thank you for listening. Today we're talking about Puma Punko. It means the gate of the Puma and sits at the south end of Lake Titicaca at over 12,000 feet in altitude above sea level and Lake Titicaca by the way is salty and Archaeologists date the site back to 500 AD and prescribe it to the Aymara civilization that rose around that time. But there are two problems. One is that the Aymara people and their folklore and legend says they did not build it. It was already there. And they further have no pre-record of having built anything similar prior to 500 AD. This points to a general problem with archaeology and how the accepted science, the normal, treats archaeological record. They look for ways to make it fit into an acceptable history. And when it doesn't fit, they force it to fit. You see, what dates this to 500 AD, according to the archaeologists, are soil samples found underneath the red sandstone slabs but that really doesn't address the rocks, and it really doesn't address the construct at all. And I believe that there's way too little information to draw a conclusion about age of this site and what's there. And if we believe the Amara people, this was already there, and it was already ruins in 500 AD. What you're looking at is a collection of giant rocks, some 25 feet by 25 feet, each weighing over a hundred tons and in addition to the red sandstone slabs and rocks that seem to have built the temples and the gates there's also these almost lego looking prefab andesite blocks some have theorized the rocks are made of geopolymer concrete a blend so strong we can't even replicate it with today's technology the problem with the whole theory is obviously how on earth did they move them? That's the same problem we have with pyramids and other sites. But also, how on earth did they come up with this method, which has nothing like it on the planet? And what produced these precision cuts? Exact 90 degree corners, drill holes, equidistant, and exact same depth one after another. And for what purpose? Research as of late has revealed that in order to come up with this kind of precision, you need drills, you need diamond heads on those drills, and you need those drills to be spinning at a thousands per minute. It is simply impossible to make this kind of rocks, cuttings, with a hammer and a chisel. But the archaeologists insist that's how it was made. The Amara people speak of a cataclysm about 14,000 years ago. And if you think about the salty water in the Lake Titicaca, fossil records found in the Andes, shellfish and other, other species of the ocean, you have to wonder. There are hundreds of these carefully crafted rocks thrown at random across the area, some weighing more than 100 tons. Who knows how many are buried under sediments of the plateau? One thing is certain, they weren't disassembled 
as an act of rage or revenge following a battle. This destruction is too massive. The only logical explanation for the destruction and random distribution of the rocks is a form of cataclysm, flood, earthquakes, or giant movement of land. Is this being looked at in a narrow context? Or should it be looked in a much wider planetary context in the vein of what Graham Hancock has done, his findings in North America, Gobekli Tepe, and here, all seem to date back to the same time, and that's a much bigger conversation, obviously. But what I want to focus on here is really just take a look at these blocks and come to one simple conclusion, that the Aymara civilization with hammers and chisels, 500 AD, did not build this. And whoever did possess knowledge, technology, and capabilities that we're not recognizing in the history of humanity at all. There have been some interesting findings as well in the Andes. Bone records have found Polynesian DNA. The Amara language has both Polynesian and Japanese influences. So you see there's interconnectivity between cultures across the Pacific from ancient times that are not recognized at all in our history. And while we do not know and we do not find any evidence of the Polynesians or Japanese building this kind of structures, we must recognize that by those examples that there's a whole lot we don't know. And making up facts to make it fit into an archaeological model that is sort of pre-sanctioned, that is not how we grow and evolve. And it points to a closed-minded approach to looking at our history, denying everything that doesn't fit and forcing other elements into our history as it's been written. There are some scientific anomalies that are associated with these rocks. They're magnetized and there's no natural explanation for it, but compasses go nuts around these rocks, pointing at north and south in every direction as you move the compass around the rocks. This, in addition to the precision of the cuts, the interlocking mechanisms of these building blocks, again, without precedent or comparison anywhere on the planet, has obviously given way to theories about aliens having been involved. And while we don't have proof of that, it is a better theory, in fact, than the hammer and chisel theory of the Amara people who themselves deny having ever done this. It wasn't the Incas either. They didn't come around till about 14, 1500. In other cultures of the Andes, none of them had the skill set or the record or the tools to build this. This required planning. It required writing. It required precise measurements and then execution to a degree of accuracy that we would even have difficulty doing today, given the size of these blocks. Who's to say? If there was a cataclysm on the planet and all the flood stories that we know from different cultures, from India, China, Mesopotamia, Christianity, and South America, if all of those lores point to a same planetary event 14,000 years ago, moving forward, we have to open our minds to other possibilities than the archeological record suggests and embrace the research of folks like David Childress, who spent a lot of time at Puma Punku and Tiwanaku and Graham Hancock, and not ridicule their work as pseudoscience, which is a code name for that's not how we evolve and grow and embrace our back history, which is much more complex and richer than we currently admit. In order for us to evolve, it is imperative that we embrace, acknowledge, and recognize the mystery of our past as it connects to ancient civilizations with high technology that includes flying objects, possibly extraterrestrials, electricity, the ability to levitate heavy objects and move them. The god Veracocha gave Tiwanaku knowledge and technology, say the Amara people, 
That's how the Tiwanaku civilization evolved. He came from across the sea and he came from the heavens. That's their legend, that's their folklore. And it sounds a lot more plausible than the Binghamton University radiocarbon dating of soil materials from the oldest layer of mound formed at Pumapunku. So the beginning of the challenge here is to recognize that we don't know where this came from. What we do know is that this was done with incredible technological capabilities, with such precision that it points to a civilization that possessed knowledge in mathematics, energy, tooling, planning. It's an evolved knowledge that led to this being possible. In 1909, uh, archaeologist named Arthur Posnesky suggested, based on studies of the gates into Pumapunku, seven or more of them, including the famous Gateway of the Sun, that they have precision alignment to spring equinox, summer solstice, etc., which is a common theme among the pyramids and even at Stonehenge. And if he dates the site back based on those alignments, he ends up also separately from Graham Hancock's research and the folklore of the Amaras. He also ends up at about 14,000 years ago. So what all of this points to is the need for an open-minded revisit of the most fascinating and mysterious places on the planet, incorporating the context of geology, archaeology, folklore, including outer edge theories about alien visitations and handover of technology and knowledge, like the legends so many times say around the planet. The obvious high-tech nature of the andesite giant Lagos leave us with uncomfortable choices. Either this was done by an earthly civilization in the distant past that may have been similarly or more advanced than us, or they were an interstellar civilization. Perhaps they were both. You can watch or listen to this and other podcasts of the Code Blue series on Project Blue Book and bluebook.tv. Please check it out. It's free. This has been a code blue for all things unexplained and unidentified. Please subscribe. And each day, let's show some compassion and kindness. I am Thor, and thank you for listening. See you next time.